तो जब हम डिजोल्व किसी सॉलिड को कर रहे हैं तो एंट्रापी बढ़ेगी सो द आंसर विल बी डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ नेपथलीन इन बेंजिन नाउ द नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल इज फोर मोल ऑफ गैस गिविंग टू मोल्स इट मीन एंट्रापी इज डिक्रीजिंग then three moles giving you two moles again entropy is decreasing so whenever you get a question like of this type first of all see in which case the number of moles are more then see in which case gases are more then see in which case the substance is being dissolved provided it is not a gas delta s is equal to q upon t q reversible this can be the enthalpy of vaporization enthalpy of fusion enthalpy of sublimation now For a reversible adiabatic process, the entropy change is the entropy change is negative, positive, zero, or two thousand. Adiabatic means Q is zero. When Q is zero, and we know delta S is equal to Q upon T, so it means entropy change will be zero. Dear student, oh, sorry, entropy change is zero. Dear students, please keep in mind that entropy of the system is a state function. but that of surrounding is not because surrounding has no limits so we apply this formula delta s q is equal to q upon t only for a reversible process if at all you have to apply for irreversible then we will say considering the surroundings to be very very large so that it becomes reversible now we have seen that enthalpy and entropy together determines the spontaneity of the reaction it is very difficult to study both the factors so scientist came out with an other thermodynamic function which was the free energy it is the amount of energy available with the system to do useful work for a process to be spontaneous delta g should be negative and dear students delta g is related to enthalpy and entropy by the expression delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s so if the process is endothermic means delta h is positive then delta s is also positive then delta g can be negative only if t delta s is greater than delta h so for a process to be spontaneous t delta s must be greater than delta h we have to keep only one thing in mind how to bring delta g negative so that the process is spontaneous then if delta h is negative delta s is also negative then delta h must be less than t delta s so that the answer comes out to be negative that is why dear students exothermic reactions are favored at low temperature so the temperature is as low as possible in order that delta h outweighs t delta s if delta h is positive and delta s is also positive means endothermic then temperature should be as high as possible so that it outweighs delta h at equilibrium delta g is zero so delta h upon delta s will give you the temperature at which the process will be at equilibrium above this it will move in the forward direction below this it will move in the backward direction now coming question, uh, questions regarding this what is the sign of delta g for the process of melting of ice at 263 kelvin you very well know melting of ice takes place at 273 kelvin means it is at equilibrium at 273 kelvin it means if the temperature is below 273 then delta g will be positive because the reaction will not be possible the melting will not be possible if instead of this so since the temperature is 263 it means the answer is first if instead of 263 he rise 273 delta g will be zero if he rise 275 means delta g will be negative next for a spontaneous endothermic reaction since he is saying spontaneous it means delta g should be negative he is saying endothermic it means delta h is positive it means now for delta g to be negative t delta s should be greater than delta h and delta s should be positive it means the correct answer will be delta s is greater than delta h upon 